research topic was uh, we'll be talking about South Korea's development of soft power. So during the 10 weeks we had in the forum, the driving question we researched was what will it take for South Korea to become a fully developed country for global power? Despite Korea's already established culture, uh, there are still more opportunities for Korea to expand on its cultural influence. Uh, this is why uh, the country must focus on promoting our cultural uh, power uh, and impact in order to prosper into a fully developed country. Joseph Nye, a professor at Harvard and former U.S. government official, introduced the concept of soft power. Nye argues that countries focus too much time and money on hard power, a corrosive way that uses military and economic means to influence, and does not pay enough attention to the importance of soft power, which is all about getting another party to do what you want through projecting your values, beliefs, and culture. If the concept is too difficult to grasp, we came up with an analogy to compare the two. Imagine you and your family traveled to an apple farm to pick apples from a tree. When arriving into the tree, you see an apple on the floor looking brown and decayed. Now when you look up, you see a big ripe apple that has beautifully ripened and is ready for a plug. Let me ask you this. Would you choose the apple has been, that has fallen and is brown and decayed, and, or would you choose the apple that has beautifully ripened? Please raise your hand if you would choose the apple that was brown and decayed. Now, <laughs> please raise your hand if you would choose the big bright apple. Well, it is the same with hard and soft power. It is the attractiveness of which people will choose and ultimately be more interested in. The juxtaposition of the two just how, proves just how important soft power is and how it persuades the public and other countries to understand the culture of Korea. South Korea's ability to spread its culture and influence through persuasion rather than the force will enable Korea to rise above the other countries and become a fully developed country and global power. Through our presentation, we will be answering the question, why is cultural influence necessary to become a global power?
an era and or a period of time that extended the global pace and popularity of Korean culture. K-pop, food, tourism, dramas, movies, broadcasting, and more have spread beyond Asia, influencing even foreigners. How do you have contributed to 0.2% or approximately $1.87 billion of Korea's GDP? In 2019, how do you have an estimated $12.3 billion boost on the Korean economy? K-pop, a major part of how you is exponentially increasing Korea's economy. Today, the biggest contributor the biggest contributor to Korea's economy is the South Korean boy band, known as BTS or Bangtan Sonyeondan. The group brings around $5 billion per year. Once BTS disbands in around 2025, however, it is unknown whether the, the economy will decrease or stay stable. Pub publicly, Korea is especially well known for its foods, which have captivated foreigners' tastes and exposed them to new genre tastes. Moreover, K drama. K-dramas are also a part of Hallyu and another huge investment for the country that has paid dividends. Most recently, in 2021, a sensational K-drama called Squid Game, directed by Kwang Hong Hyun, drastically boosted the economy and received love from all around the world. Finally, tourist attractions such as Nansan Tower or Tower Tower shocks tourists with Korea's breathtaking scenery and clothes. So how do you advance to Korea to where it is publicly loved? There are still ways in which Korea can continue to strengthen its global reach. So although South Korea has advanced its cultural influence through the 1980 Olympics, how you and technology, and despite Korea already established culture, there is still room for improvement and more opportunities for Korea to grow in the following three areas. Korean traditional culture, multiculturalism, and education. So a problem is that Korean traditional culture needs more recognition and an identity. So as Allison mentioned, Korea is very advanced in the spread of Hallyu, such as modern Korean dramas, movies, music, and broadcasting. However, not a lot of foreigners know a lot about the traditional elements of Korea, such as traditional music, dance, theater, instruments, clothing, and the art, such as paintings and ceramics. Another problem would be that people cannot distinguish Korea from other diversifying Asian countries. A lot of foreigners aren't able to clearly identify and separate Korean culture from other types of Eastern Asian cultures, such as Chinese, Japanese, and Filipino culture. An example of this would be that some people mistake kimchi, a traditional side dish, and hanbok's traditional clothing as originating from China. One incident would be when a Chinese drama titled Royal Feast was first released, many Korean netizens were infuriated over the depiction of the Korean traditional handbook in a Chinese drama. The Chinese historical drama series were set in the Ming Dynasty, and while the actor should have been seen wearing Chinese traditional clothes, Korean netizens began to point out the similarities it had to the handbook. Chinese netizens responded to this backlash by complaining that the handbook was not traditionally Korean anyways, because it had roots in China and was adopted from the Ming Dynasty. Koreans became even more infuriated and started to post pictures as evidence to show the difference between the traditional clothes worn in the Ming Dynasty in China versus the Chosun Dynasty in Korea. Even Korean traditional clothing researchers say that most of the traditional Chinese clothes worn in the drama have a very remarkable resemblance to handbooks. Another incident regarding the situation would be Kimchi Fear. The Kimchi battle started on November 29th when the Global Times, which is a Chinese tabloid, released an article that stated that China had won a global certification for its production of kimchi, which is fiercely loved by Koreans. Koreans were absolutely enraged when China tried to take credit for Korean, Korea's kimchi production and also felt like China was trying to take away an important part of Korea's culture. Korean netizens also stated that China's claims that China was a world standard for the kimchi industry were tokenized. Regarding these two situations, some people believe that Koreans were being overly protective of their culture, but many foreigners also came to their defense, insisting that it was natural for Koreans to be protective, since it wasn't the first time China tried to lay claim on Korea's culture. Ultimately, hanbok is a traditional Korean dress, and hanbok is a representative Korean dish, and both should be recognized as such. 
As Koreans, we must take ownership and pride in what is rightfully a significant, uh, a significant aspect of our traditional culture. So another, moving on, another problem would be that when South Korea and the United States are compared in terms of their music industries, the United States music industry is large scale and has a greater influence than the Korean music industry. The American music industry contributes around $763.6 billion to the U.S. economy, and it makes up 4.2% of the GDP, while the Korean music industry generates around $10 billion to the South Korean, Korea's economy, which is a very large difference when Korea is being compared to the U.S. Another problem would be that more well-known musicians are based in the United States than in Korea. K-pop is popular and recognized globally, but there are so much more American artists that are known worldwide. For example, during the 2021 Grammy, many people expected BTS to win the first Grammy awarded to um, a K-pop group due to the song's countless streams and awards, yet Ariana Grande and Lady Gaga beat them out, leaving BTS's fan base heavily disappointed. K-pop is seen as a global phenomenon, but when comparing the number of well-known and popular musicians based in America and Korea, Korea is still not at America's level. So, we came up some solutions, which is to maintain traditional elements by adding them to modern Korean culture. Predominantly, the newer generations need to value Korean traditional culture as it was the foundation of Korea itself. The modern, the modern culture for which Korea is now today has been built upon the traditional aspects, reminding Koreans of their origins. Preserving traditional Korean culture now would enable the future generation to learn more about their heritage and culture, and in doing so, better understand their identities as Koreans. Starting from the music industry, South Korean pop can incorporate traditional elements into the modern music and dance today. BTS exemplifies this idea in their 2000 BTS MMA performance and their music video Idol. In their 2000 MMA performance, three members are seen to be dancing with Korean traditional instruments and music. Plus, in their Idol music video, members are seen dancing in humbles with a background of Korean percussion and traditional wooden structures. Specifically, in The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, they perform wearing humbles in the Gyeongbuk Gong Palace, which set a craze. Millions of fans express their astonishment with the incorporation. One member, Minyuki, comments saying, it's amazing we're performing at the Gyeongbuk Gong Palace. While BTS has been called out for using more English lyrics to appeal to Western audiences, the new idea of adding Korean traditional elements into modern forms of music provides a potential solution to spotlighting the rich value of their Korean content whether it be in the performances, outfits, or messages about South Korean society. Be it in English or Korean, Korean idols can start incorporating traditional details so that the concept of the culture is not forgotten, thus continuing to show pride in Korea. Another solution we came up with to use tr Korean traditional culture to create unique colors for Korea. As Gina talked about earlier, Foreigners are not able to distinguish Korea from any other type of Asian cultures. Some steps Korea could take to promote more of the Korean traditional side could be more exposure to showcases of Korean paintings and ceramics made in the earliest developments of Korea, and to spread the YouTube videos made by Yongguk Namja, also known as the Korean Englishman, as he presents American and British celebrities with Korean food. Without, without continuing the legacy of Korean culture, future generations will start to forget the origins, which is why Korea needs to expand more as a culture. This video we will be showing now is a 2018 MMA BTS performance where J-Hope, the first mom member, appears with dancing Sangbumo, a three-drum three Korean dance, Pak Jimin dancing with a Kuchet, a traditional fan, and finally Jong Do Gook with the Max dance. There will be Korean percussions and Pungwon, a dance of special traditional hats.
traditional culture can be used to influence Korea's overall cultural influence, and it can also be used to attract foreigners' interest towards Korea in general. ways to make people feel at home in foreign countries. Arguably one of the most popular methods is broadcasting live television. Popular Korean TV networks that stream a vast number of TV shows across the globe like KBS, NBC, and SBS consist of some influential foreign celebrities like Sam Hemington and Sam Okir. Both Hemington and Okir are the mo two most famous Korean celebrities presented in Korea and Pacific. Both Hemington and Okir are the two most famous Foreign celebrities present present in Korea and statistics display that foreign celebrities like them can influence the number of inbound visitors to South Korea. This graph represents the amount of inbound visitors to Korea in millions, which ranges from the years 2000 to 2020. The graph starts by ascending up slowly through the years until in 2015, the numbers blew up from 13.23 million to an astonishing 17.24 million. What specifically triggered the graph to fluctuate by 4.01 million, and how did that trigger? One of the most popular foreign Korean celebrities, Sam Okir, broke his personal record for the most appearances in films slash shows, which was coincidentally done in 2015. He even won a Global Star Award for one of, Kore one of the Korean films he appeared in during that time. More evidence shows that Sam Hemington, also one of the most popular foreign Korean celebrities, broke his personal record of most appearances in Korean films, once again coincidentally during 2015. In my perspective, Korea is, is gaining popularity globally through foreign Korean celebrities like Ok here and Hemington, because when foreigners observe these personal connections, they begin to feel more at ease and ultimately comfortable to visit Korea without fear of discrimination or slander. Not, not only do celebrities like Hamilton and Ok here capture global attention, a variety slash reality TV shows featuring foreigners have developed over time. For example, Korean reality TV shows like Non Summit feature the majority of foreign casts who all speak Korean fluently. If we take a look at the at both of the graphs, we can see that Non Summit won two awards in 2015, which is again the date in the when inbound visitors to Korea fluctuated. If you look again, Non Summit has only won three awards in the duration it was broadcasted for, unfortunately ending in 2018. TV show won another award in 2017, which, if we look back at the inbound visitors graph, is the second highest fluctuation rate, ranging from 13.34 million to 15.35 million, ultimately resulting in the final number of 17.5 million inbound visitors, which is South Korea at its peak. I don't think any of these statistics are a coincidence, and I can confidently believe in the statement that live broadcasting of foreign casts increases the popularity of South Korea in an international scale, resulting in foreigners visiting the country because they feel safe. This is one indication that the embrace of multiculturalism will figure prominently into South Korea's increasing soft power, effectively, effectively allowing the country to be at the forefront of global decision making and influence. The problem in Korea is that it is not multicultural, and people of all Korean and people are of all Korean ethnicity. 
Therefore, Korean people tend to marry within their own group and in the same room. International marriages only make up around 3.4% of all marriages. In this graph, it shows the number of international marriages in South Korea from 2010 to 2020. In 2010, there were around 34,235 international marriages. But in 2020, the number of people marrying internationally went down to 15,341. When a Korean person does marry someone of a different race, they often face criticism from others. Another problem in Korea is that a lot of Korean people tend to say racist slurs to others and judge them harshly. So many people are struggling to embrace the changing reality of a diversifying country. According to the Korea Immigration Service, fatality for foreign nationals, both long-term and short-term visitors, reached 1.976 million as of August, up to 2,858 from a month earlier. This means that more people are coming to Korea and that there will be more variety of cultures that will be introduced. According to Ji Shin, professor of sociology at Stanford, ethnic nationalism, or Hamido, is a source of both pride and prejudice. Koreans have a strong ethnic nationality, national identity due to its homogeneity and shared bloodline, but this could potentially lead to prejudice and discrimination against non-Koreans. Because there will be more foreigners coming to South Korea over the years, Koreans should also exchange ideas on different cultures and how they celebrate them. This can lead to them, this can lead to them um, becoming more accept, accepting of each other and open up the perspectives on the world beyond the scope of their own cultures. We can also get more familiar with the different cultures by learning about them in multiple places, like at schools, at their families, etc. These values should be ingrained in the Korean psyche as the country moves toward embracing increasing multiculturalism. Additionally, many migrant workers from poor nations in Southeast Asia moved to Korea in search of jobs and the prospects for better lives. To better support these migrants, South Korean government policies need to consider some of the challenges they face and help them integrate into society. Labor laws, for example, could be designed to better protect migrant workers and their rights. Most importantly, the Korean people need to adopt more accepting attitudes toward non-Koreans and treat them the same way they would treat a fellow Korean citizen. This all relates to the research question from the beginning, because if more people get interested in coming to South Korea, it can boost Korea's tourism interest in South Korea and maybe even population. Multiculturalism can be used to influence Korea's overall global power and the increase in foreigners that are coming to South Korea can lead to the changes in the education system as well. Uh, so here in this image, we have a structure of modern Korean education. And Korean students uh, must finish ninth grade. It's required by the government. And their school years last from March to February with the summer break between um, mid-July to mid-August, as well as a few cultural and religious holidays. Uh, the Korean high school grading system is very different from what we use in America. Uh, they use A plus A, B plus B, and F as their letter grades, where A plus and A are considered as outstanding or excellent, and B plus B and F are considered average, below average, and poor. After high school, similarly to American schools, Korean students can go to college or university and then they can get a bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degree. All right. Um, so the problems in uh, the problems in Korean education uh, that uh, Korean school system is very competitive, and that causes many students to overwork themselves. Uh, students have abnormally long study hours and parents are usually the main factor in academic competitiveness. Uh, in this chart, you can see that the average Korean high schooler studies for around 16 hours a day at school and private classes, and they sleep for around five to six hours. Uh, this leads to higher levels of anxiety in students, as shown in the bottom chart, around 73% of students feel anxiety or nervousness even when resting. 
some of the consequences of this competitiveness is higher suicide rates due to poor grades and fear of failure, uh, increase in alcohol and drug use, which is used as coping methods, and lack of sleep due to studying. Uh, another problem is the diversity in Korean education. Foreign Western students often feel unintegrated in Korean schools, and the diversity in Korea is often used to enhance the university's prestige. So the relationship between foreign students and the schools are very superficial. Uh, there's also not enough uh, cultural exchange between international and foreign students in Korea. So I came up with a couple of solutions towards these problems in the Korean education system. As stated before, the problem with academic competition was that students can have abnormally long study hours, or parents could be a student's main factor in academic competitiveness. Uh, solutions to these issues could be parents becoming more encouraging towards their kids. Uh, so you may now be wondering, how are we able to make schools force their parents to encourage their kids more often? Wouldn't a law have to be passed to create a major change? I suggest that schools can hold meetings or teacher slash like homeroom or advisor check-ins with the students to encourage students or talk with the students about academic struggles. As for long study hours, which may tire students because of competitiveness, as stated before, Schools should hold mandatory study halls or breaks during the school day where electronics are not permitted. These classes can be, the purpose of these classes can be to catch up with work or to rest. Um, and also the consequences of competitiveness results in many students resorting to drug usage or suicide. For this issue, I suggest establishing a mandatory student therapy program to help ease a student's academic stress as for drug issues. I think annual talks about drugs or drinking during assembly will be able to help a student make better decisions in stressful times. And finally, solutions for diversity in the Korean education system could be welcoming ceremonies for foreign students to make them feel integrated into the school. As for accept acceptance, um, schools should really accept foreign students to increase prestige. I believe that schools should not only help students increase reputation, but to also show other students how the school is welcoming towards foreign students. And also, there's not enough cultural exchange between Korean and foreign students. So we suggested that cultural exchange between international students and foreign students can be improved by being more welcoming towards foreign students, teaching language and history of Korea, the, edu the education, maybe reading more Korean literature, and introduce a Korean language learning system towards foreign students. And going back to answering the research question, Korea's education system is important because of how it needs to start accepting other foreign students and be able to spread Korea's culture through education. Okay, so in summary, this all leads to our main argument about the importance of soft power and the power of cultural influence. As Kim Gu once said, it is sufficient that our wealth makes our lives abundant it is sufficient that our strength is able to prevent foreign invasions. The only thing that I desire in infinite quantity is the power of a noble culture. This is because the power of culture both makes ourselves happy and gives happiness to others. Wow. <laughs> uh, so, in conclusion, for Korea to become a fully developed country or a global power, Korea should spread more cultural influence. And this cultural influence is necessary to becoming a global power because of how it can help influence Korea's power over other global nations, as well as different areas and other cultural groups. Korea can use the different aspects of Korean traditional cultural and multiculturalism and education to help spread uh, cultural influence.
Uh, so you guys talked about like traditional cultures and stuff with Korea. So overall, like, how do you think, like, uh, I guess maintaining that identity of like what believe, like what Koreans believe is theirs, overall helps them on the global scale as like a power. Um. So that's what we talked about in our solutions. So we can incorporate more like Korean traditional culture into like K-pop, and we can also display some traditional paintings and ceramics. And we can also um, use celebrities such as Yong Namja again as a Korean Englishman as he shows the world and you know his fans of Korean culture. <laughs> yes? Um, obviously you guys have done a great research. Um, you as a part of uh, second generation of Koreans, um, what are some of the ways that you think you uh, can become a part of the solution to influence the culture of other uh, countries? Okay, as Gen Z, um, right now the most popular app is TikTok among all of us, and um, there are basically, we can spread more like in social media, like paid, and we can spread the cultures within these social media apps, such as TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and as such. <laughs>